Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Trufman from Overclocking TV and this is uh, Massman Peter from HWBot. Hi Peter. Hi, how are you doing? Doing great and you? Doing great as well. We had a long weekend here at the Gamers Assembly. We're still in uh, France. Most of the guys actually did already pack all their stuff and uh, are eating back home for like spending some time and to sleep because some of them had a huge lack of sleeps. And we are here today at this time to comment <laughs> on... The RG also OC Showdown 2015 Formula Series Round 1. So this is the last minute of the competition so far. I think there's like less than one hour left uh, for that. And we actually call that the popcorn, popcorn time. The, yeah, the popcorn time. So it's uh, 46 minutes left right now. And um, we have uh, the submissions tab op open here. Uh, oh, I can't find the screen anymore. Ah, damn it. So you have to speak a little bit while I try to change the cameras. Okay, so this is the popcorn time. This is uh, the first time we do the popcorn time live. Uh, that's going to be uh, interesting to see how that turns out. Uh, if you have any questions, you can ask us on the live chat on Twitch and Dailymotion. We are streaming at both places all the weekend. Uh, and uh, myself and Mastman will be able to answer some of the questions that you guys have. We'll try our best, that's for sure. So pull up the scores again so we can go over what the current top scores are in the, in the competitions. So while I'm trying to get the scores on the <laughs> screen, can you uh, introduce the uh, ROG Showdown competitions formula? What is special about that one? So ACES this year is hosting a series of competitions called the ROG OC Showdown. People that uh, might remember the very first OC Showdown. Um, the very first one is actually in 2008 in, uh, in Dreamhack in Sweden, which was a live competition. Last summer, um, the ROG boys and girls, they also made a Z97 OC showdown. And then they, they kind of build on this, this, uh, this idea of the overclocking uh, series to build one both for extreme overclockers and one for a uh, enthusiast and air overclockers. So the extreme series is um, evidently for the people that are using LN2 cooling, so the elite and the extreme overclockers on, uh, on HWBot. And then this formula series is um, for... Um, the people who just bench air cooling so the enthusiasts the novices and the rookies it's uh, it's very obvious that extreme and formula are taking from their product names so you have the rampage 5 extreme and then you have the maximus 7 formula obviously so round one of the extreme uh, competition already finished a, a couple of months ago from the the first round of the formula series is is about to finish in 45 minutes. Uh, the, first, the second round of the Extreme Series has also been announced already, so you can find the information on OC Esports already. Um, I think the limitations or the, the benchmark requirements will be announced soon. It should be next week or the week after. Great. So what can we expect? We didn't see uh, yet who are in the first place and so on. What do you expect from these competitions? Because it's been a few weeks it's running. Um, it's it's hard to say uh, what what to expect because for a very long time the enthusiasts and the novices and the rookies didn't really have that much of exposure on HWBot. So um, I think we're still in the phase where people try to recognize the, the known faces of of the enthusiasts and the novices and try to figure out who are the people that continuously to come back and and. and are very good in these in this type of competitions. I know that the the guys who are here at the Gamers Assembly, the, the guys from the Clan OC, the French team, uh, as well as Kaukerland team, they're doing very well nowadays in the, the Rookie Rumbles and the Novice Nimbles and all the enthusiast competitions. So far we have one of the guys that did compete in this uh, ROG Showdown Formula Series, Round 1, that is still here with us. And that's a Zwitterion. 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 He's a French guy. And what does that mean in French? Uh, it means nothing. Means I think nothing. it's a made-up name. Okay. <coughs> so if we have a look at what's left, we have 35 overclockers competing from that. The convention was running for one month from March 6 to April 6. There is uh, 42 minutes left from now on. So we will know what's going to happen at the end of these 42 minutes. And it's still open for submission, so that means there might be some sandbagging. Sandbagging is something that we <laughs> regularly see in the extreme cooling uh, categories. I'm not sure if the if the air cooling guys will. <coughs> Sorry, Gesundheit. If the air cooling guys will apply the same strategy, probably, but we don't know. We'll see. 
So let's have a look at the ranking right now, 42 minutes before the end of that round. Uh, the first benchmark was XTU, the second one was a target uh, uh, target score on maximum, read, and other Cadzilla 720p. Mm -hmm. so, so far, we have two French guy at first and second place. Interesting to see Nvidia Forever 2 that was here with us uh, today, maybe. Yes, uh, he this was, weekend, yeah. yeah. And also Zwitterion that is uh, actually still here, uh, packing up his uh, gears to go back home in the next few hours. So if uh, we have some time and he still end up in the top three, we might uh, have him on the live for you guys. Third place is someone from Romania. His name is uh, is uh, Wanted, and he's wanted to compete in that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Fourth place is uh, is actually from from is from Finland. His uh, nickname is the Baron and. I think he won the last <laughs> rookie rumble, so he's really new to the competitive overclocking side on on, uh, on HW. But already competing at quite a high level in the in the the competition here, OC Showdown. Then we have a fan, fanal, fanality, fantali, fantality, maybe fantality, fantality. I, I don't know. <laughs> milf. And milf. That was Aldo here this weekend. Yes. Here in the under the French guy. It's a milf. Not to confuse Melt. with a, with a Melt, yeah. Milf, yeah. Yeah. not to confuse with a popular name on the internet or a popular word on the internet, especially uh, in the evening time. Or any time I'm saying. <laughs> any, well, I won't go that way. Um, then the seventh guy is Nick N I K. Is it that Belgium flag or Germany? It's German. Oh, so he's German. Then we have someone from the US, uh, Jab three eight three, and then we have some guys from. What is this country? Peru. Peru? Yes. Raules 009. And in 10th ten, place, the Filmbot. Filmbot. He's actually been around for a long time. So he's an enthusiast overclocker who's not really wanted to do the extreme overclocking part. And he's now active in the, in the air-cooled competitions. So, so far, the top 10 goes from 15, uh, 115 points to 63 points. So that's like pretty much like double the point in uh, 10 different places. Uh, Basman, what did you expect at first when uh, this competition arrived? Uh, did you expect to have like the top 10 in very close points or more like uh, a bit in, uh, in between and have like maybe like five guys in the top, top, top and then all the other guys in, in, in below that? Or uh, did you expect to have it uh, this close? It's always difficult to, to put in to, to put in a real guess on the overclocking competition because it depends on not just when people are submitting, people might still be holding scores tighter chest, but also who's participating, <coughs> what are the hardware requirements exactly. With the point granularity it's it's you know, someone can have like uh, like NVIDIA Forever two, he has two fifty pointers and then a, a fifteen points in the target state. So it's 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 a it's a quite a competitive competition I would say that the points are well spread out amongst all the all the competitors. Uh, don't forget there is still 39 minutes left in this competition, so that means there could be some uh, sunbagging uh, happening. Yeah, well I'm I'm and also looking at the Twitter account for uh, oh and I see that the OC Baron just submitted a 40,676 Cadzilla 720p uh, score five minutes ago. So if you go to the submission time, we can see his score right here. And maybe you can uh, get some of the details on the last score. He's using, he's using a Core i7-4770K, clocked at 5 GHz. And uh, although a GTX 980 at uh, 1,766, uh, no, 1,764 and uh, 2,176 for the memory. That's quite impressive. And the Cadzilla uh, benchmark results at 720p is 40,676 points. So if we go back to the ranking, up there, go back to the ranking, the ranking will probably change in the next few minutes. We have to check uh, what is his uh, score on that specific run and that's uh, where he had the... Uh, we can look at the, the third stage and see how much the, points he has in the... So let's have a look at the third stage. Oh, blah. <laughs> yeah, I need to... I didn't prepare all that because that's the first time we do it. So, Cadzilla 720p. 720p, yes. It's a lot of limitations there and we see that the Baron is in a third place right now. 36 points for a score of 40,676. He's trailing Wanted from Romania who's uh, who's in a third place, one place above the Baron, uh, by about 300 points. So there's still there's still a little of uh, 
a little stretch on, on the score, I suppose. Can we check the difference between the frequencies of the guys? That would be interesting to see how they do perform. 1649 MHz for the GPU and 2231 MHz for the memory. On the GTX 980, because most of the guys uh, that will compete today are actually using that um, newly launched, I mean, not that newly anymore, but launched graphic cards. And it's actually much easier to uh, buy a 980 than a Titan X so far. Yes, a Titan X is pretty expensive. Pretty expensive, I say. Overly expensive. Uh -huh. Well, define it the, the way you want. So let's have a look at the difference between the two uh, scores. So he is having a 4790K, same CPU as uh, um, the Baron. The Baron, yeah. But he's at 5.2 gigahertz. Okay. Yeah. So that might explain some of the impact on the scores. And he's uh, benching at 1737 gigahertz on the GPU. Don't know if you can see it on the right side. Oh, that would be easier like this. So 1737 megahertz for the GPU core, while the other guys was having. I need to find it back. Can have it somewhere go up a little right bit. here. There you go. So there's a little bit more frequency on the GPU, but then a little bit less on the memory clock. I think. I think you wanted is at 2.2 gigahertz. Yeah. 2.2 gigahertz and then um, the Baron is only at 2.1 it's it's a 50 megahertz different it's not that much but we can see although the temperature because the formula series have a temperature limitation yep. uh, everything every component have to be above 20 degrees that's Correct. very important for uh, for the submissions that's actually a way to avoid anyone using some extreme cooling Correct. and uh, uh, chillers stuff like this so as long as it's over 20 degrees under load so that means you, you do have a lot of uh, optimization on the cooling system too. Like even if you use water cooling, uh, having like a 2100 loads on the GTX 980, that's not that a, easy. Yeah. You need to have a very good cooling solution. I think we can maybe check one of the system pictures on the, on the submissions. You can click here on the, yeah. On the one from Le Baron, the Zebaron. Uh, oops. There we go. Yeah, you can already see it's a quite an intricate I think he also cooled the VRM. You can yeah. see it on the right-hand side. The VRM is cooled um, with water uh, with water as well, and then we have the the CPU looped into the same loop um, from the looks of it. But it's it's not really clear. I assume that the temperature goes to the GPU first before the CPU. But it could also be the other way around. That I'm not sure. Exactly. I mean, the VRM doesn't eat that much, but you just don't want them to to overeat yes, over time. Exactly. That's that's yeah. the only reason why you you might uh, cool them down. You can also see there is a custom memory heat sinks on the each individual memory chip to again get the higher higher frequency. It's a little interesting to see that he's using the same loop for the CPU and the GPU. Uh, we we I think I saw some of the guys uh, having two different systems, one for the CPU and one for the GPU. It's like a check so uh, that's the, that wanted. was like a optimization. So this is wanted uh, setup. He's using uh, a triple rod. Yeah. Um, and then this picture, his graphics card is not powered. By a PSU, but I assume that that's just for uh, for the big picture purpose. Yeah, it was actually uh, <laughs> just maybe setting things up. It's also pretty interesting to see that he uh, wanted it using the really, really tiny Asus uh, Maximus 7 Impact motherboard. The Mini ITX. Yeah, with a with a massive graphics card. That's fun to see. Actually, the, some people using that uh, that motherboard is actually quite uh, powerful for for the size, uh, especially with the extra VRM and so on. But it's funny that when you plug the graphic card, it's actually getting bigger than the motherboard itself. And when you when you see some of the like the the, the big graphic cards, like the Lightnings and the Matrix, uh, or the big one, the, the Strix and so on, like the graphic card is like it's huge. And then you have like uh, XL ATX or like over ATX size uh, motherboard, and it's like. Damn, this system is going like to be way too big. And but still, you can manage to do stuff with like a small system. It doesn't fit in your mini ITX case anymore, but. <laughs> so let's uh, check the system of uh, of Nvidia Forever Two now that we're at it. And Oof, oh, that thing. was like cell phone picture, I guess. Looks like a cell phone picture, but again, also the seven, the Maximus Seven Impact. With a loop that goes, um, I think it also connects to the VGA yep. card. CPU first, then goes to the GPU. Is actually cooling down the VRM of the graphic cards with a with a big fan that you stop with like a <laughs> rubber band. If we have another 
picture right here. So I think he's using the EK water blocks. On that's this uh, on the. Uh, I think that's the same that wanted. Uh, sorry, the Baron is using because you could see the VRM cooling on uh, on those graphics card. What is the? Can you look up what the the GPU frequency is for in uh, Nvidia Forever Two? Let's see. have a look right there. So you can see, yeah, the, the, the memory frequency is at 2164 megahertz, and then the, the core clock is at 1735. But maybe there is a higher boost clock. Can we see that on the screenshot? So it's uh, 1735 megahertz on the GPU by NVIDIA Forever 2. Then it's also at 5.2 gigahertz. So now we have to look back at some other settings. Maybe you have a better optimized system. Yeah, that Maybe is possible. Maybe he's having some uh, special tweak applied. Maybe he spent more time on the systems. Uh, so far, it seems that the memory is at uh, 13, 1,332 megahertz. Mm -hmm. So that's actually like pretty basic, to be honest. That's pretty good. Yeah, pretty nice for 8, 12, 8 yeah. memory timings. Yeah. So it's cast 8, while some of the other guys were actually at uh, a bit over that, but the cast attendee was a bit worse. So that might be impacting on the performance at the same time. And if we look at the last guy... If the Baron is only running at 1200, 8, 11, 10. So I would say that the, 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 the frequency, the memory frequency or the memory optimization by the Baron is inferior to the one of Wanted, which is inferior to the one of in, NVIDIA Forever 2. So it seems that the memory configuration is what sets these guys apart at, the, at this moment. So far, there is 37 minutes left in these competitions and we'll be monitoring if there is new submission coming on, on this. Everything you can see right here on the screen is live from ocesport.io. You can find it online at oc-esports.io and you can look on the uh, competition title that is ROG Showdown Formula Round 1. Peter, yes. do you expect sandbagging from the people playing in the formula? Mom, maybe, maybe, maybe I not, know. I don't know. I suppose yes, because we've already seen the Baron submitting in the last hour of the competition. Uh, actually, there's a, a story about like a Zwitterion 93, uh, the guy from uh, Clan OC. He did post his score this morning. Okay. Actually, I, I saw the score up there like 20 minutes after he, he just posted. And it was fun to see that it was like a benching for that this morning. Oh, okay. It was benching for this convention here at the HW Bot World Tour at the Gamers Assembly in Poitiers. I can imagine that it, the, the cold temperature in this this morning would actually have helped his system because it was pretty chilly. Actually, the, I have to close the door because we have a, a, a bad cold air coming right here. It's a draft. <laughs> Much better now. So uh, yeah, Zwitterion was actually benching this morning. That's funny because when we came back from uh, from our sleep, I mean, the f the only few hours we had over the weekend. <laughs> so, well, we must tell that we are a little bit less active, and then we we would usually be on the stream, provided that we didn't really sleep that that much. We flew in straight from uh, fr straight from Taipei and Montreal. Uh, travel to Poitiers to the next day immediately start setting up everything and then the day after uh, doing the overclocking for two days so it's, it's been a it's been, been a, a very uh, buzzy weekend to be honest definitely uh, yeah but so far I really liked it uh, it was a, a nice a nice event uh, don't forget guys we are monitoring the live chat on twitch.tv as well as on Denny Motions. so if you have any questions regarding these competitions it will be interesting to have some information about that. You can ask any question you want. Any question will do. Not any question. You're going to get in trouble. Related to that. any question related to this competition is okay. <laughs> any, any question related to the rankings and or submissions of this competition will do. So, um, yeah, I was actually talking about this with Arian, so we can check his score because he did that this morning. Right here, if you can actually see, that was the... That's the setup he's using, but that's not the the one he was benching this morning. Um. But still, he had uh, 1,326 mark score using the 4770K at five, almost 5.1 gigahertz. That's not bad. A 5 gigahertz with a 
with a with a with a water cooling loop is pretty nice. Um, I, I want to mention this. We we did a workshop here with the amateurs at Gamers Assembly as well, and they were running the XDU benchmark with a, a Pentium G thirty two fifty eight system, only cooled by a, by a, by a regular, regular CPU cooler. Yeah, air cooling. The, the fan at maybe fifty percent, not even maxed out. And the guys were actually running four point nine one set of even five gigahertz stable through XTU. So we see that the top guys here with the, with the custom water cooling, of course, with a, with a quad core are running 5.1 gigahertz, but the guys with the dual core here, amateurs, five gigahertz as well. That's, that's amazing. I was, I was impressed. And, and there's, there's maybe one thing that uh, the amateurs didn't knew that much about like the impact on the V core. That they, they like the higher, li the upper limit they should reach, and so on. And we saw them putting like 1.65 volts on the G3258 on hair. And some people say, I will never apply that on hair. Like some of the top of a clicker status, like I will never go that far. Well, you could also see that in next to you, it, 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 it paid off because the first, the first section of the benchmark would run fine, and then the score is gathered from that part because it's the, the peak performance. But you could see that the systems were throttling all the way through. So the CPU was already in protection mode itself. It was trying to save itself from, from, from I wouldn't say burning up, just from crashing, crashing down mm -hmm. by throttling, throttling down. So in a benchmark where stability or the performance is measured over the entirety of the, of the benchmark time, this kind of overclocking will not, will not help whatsoever. If you run, for example, a Super Pi or a W Prime... The, the, it will not last. Uh, no, you will have a really bad performance. That's that's the way uh, the uh, the XT benchmark actually uh, actually work. Um, it seems that the temperature it was running at was like uh, 89 degrees, so that's maybe that was like yeah, that was quite a lot, I guess. The memory was the almost 1300 megahertz at the uh, CAS 8 and uh, 12, so that's still uh, it's uh, it's normal scores, good scores, still. Let's uh, let's have a look at the, all the XT scores now that we're at it. So that was stage stage one. One XTU. So Nvidia Forever Two is currently leading with three hundred and forty nine um, uh, points per core. So it's a it's a quad core since he's running at uh, his uh, total score is thirteen ninety six. When you divide per core, you take the number of cores on the CPU, not the one, not, not the numbers of cores that are activated. Yes, or correct. Or hyper-threading. So if I have like a four-core CPU with hyper-threading, like the 4770K, it's it will only by count four. as four cores. Yes. It will just be divided by four. Yeah. On the other hand, if you use the G3258, that will be divided by two because there's only two cores. So if we look lower down, we have Wanted uh, at 346 points per core, Nick from Germany 343 points per core, and so forth down. I, I can see that in the top 10, they're all using quad-core CPU, so maybe we can find the first uh, dual core in this ranking. Let's go down. Let's go down even, even further. Right, right. Oh, there's uh, someone from Belgium as well. Go, Belgium. <laughs> 700. That's pretty interesting because the G thirty two fifty eight isn't isn't that bad for um, for this kind of benchmarking. Like it can clock a little bit higher than the quad cores, and especially if you divide the cores by two, you actually have a fairly competitive score. So I think the the, the three hundred and twenty marks by Jiao Bao from Thailand, if I'm right. Vietnam. Uh, Vietnam, sorry. So he's running at 4.5 gigahertz. And he's actually using the G3258. Yeah. <laughs> that would dig the kebab. So Z97K using the G3258, 320 mark. Actually, we had some guys here at the uh, at the event that did a, a higher score than that. I think that the, the top gig. score we saw was 354. And, and admittedly, this, this was a great CPU, a great system, but I think they could have easily gone 360 or 300. They didn't even touch the the memory. No, to be exactly, honest, they yeah. didn't change that. Even if you just load the uh, XMP, that will uh, maybe have some uh, give some extra points. But don't forget that the people that were uh, at the amateur competition this weekend were amateur. Some of them made their first competition in uh, first score after an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah, and they were they were really really amateur. We were uh, first gave them a workshop to explain how. 
XTU works and how overclocking works and why do we overclock and how do you participate. So 5 gigahertz stable through XTU on just a regular air cooling, very good for amateur overclockers. Oh, we have someone joining the stream. Oh, sorry. No, you can come. You can <laughs> present yourself, uh, do what you, explain what you're doing and stuff like this. We'll, we'll do it. <laughs> Christophe is uh, is uh, ooh, he's uh, in charge of the surveillance, so we have to hide everything. <laughs> <laughs> I hide all the stuff. Uh, I guess uh, we're gonna have to take a small uh, a small break, and we're gonna come back commenting on stage uh, two. Yes, that was the target score for maximum. Yes, and we'll be right back. If I find the the right video to put in there, yeah, this one.
Oh, uh, hello guys, back at the live stream co popcorn time of the ROG OC Showdown Formula Series Round 1. We're in the last 10 minutes and NVIDIA Forever 2 is still, is still leading. I don't think we have seen any new submissions here. So, um, it's the last 10 minutes, truth. Last uh, 9 minutes from now on. Oh, okay, yes. So NVIDIA Forever 2 is still in the lead with 115 points. But behind him we have Zbitorion, 93 with 110 points. Then we have Wanted with 100 points. The Baron with 90 points. Fantalit Fantality. Fantal, no. Fantality. Fantawanti. Fantawanti. 
from Vietnam with 84 points. And then Mills with 84 points. And then Nick from Germany with 76 points. What happens if there is a tie in the number of points? Like 84 and 84, how do you rank them? Uh, the rank is whoever reaches that amount of points first. So that means that uh, Fanta, ah, Fanta, in, Fanta and T? That's difficult to say, like the nicknames, right? Vietnam Overclocker? Yeah, the Vietnam Overclocker mm -hmm. is actually uh, gonna be the. He was the first one to achieve 84 points, so yes. that's why he's, he, he's ranked fifth, while the Mip is ranked sixth. That's correct. Uh, I'm pretty sure that Mip uh, won't have any scores because he was uh, here benching with us this weekend, and if he had some scores, he should have put them already. Or he's in his apartment waiting to submit. From what we heard from the guys that came back from the... Because all the guys from Clancy and Cogodan stayed in the same house for the weekend. And from what they say, they all left the house already. So oh, they okay. might be... They are actually on the road going back home. So, so maybe, maybe he's like holding something to post it. But that would be very like a last minute to do that. If you lost the 3G connection in the mm -hmm. car, you cannot submit the score anymore. And there's only seven minutes left. And maybe your, uh, your screenshot is too large of a size or you don't have the system pictures with you or... Uh That, that's, you know, that always happens. Some people want to send back, so sometimes means that you submit the scores at the very last time of the competitions, but sometimes you miss the information on the systems, you don't have the right screenshot, or you go out to the toilets or go out to take a beer and you came back, it's too late. And you cannot complain, that's the rules. I mean, there's an end. It's not because you did the score, it it's actually the says submission of the score in the right time. It says specifically in the OC showdown rules that the scores afterwards will not be added. So if you're late, you're late, you're a problem. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the rule. You, I mean, had, you had a you month. Have a start and a and you have a start and an end. If you, don't, if you want to play the game, be, be ready to lose. That's always like this, right? That's a very strange motto. I always <laughs> use that one. If you are not ready to lose, just don't play. That is okay. Yeah, I see your point. I see your point. Anyway, you had 30 days to submit. I mean, it's not gonna. You didn't submit. You didn't set the score in the last minute. Usually, there's a, always some people who bench at the very last second. But but six minutes usually it's like very very uh, close. You should already have your scores. You're just maybe holding the scores to. You have like everything's ready. Just wait to press submit or participate. You but what the scores you know? And what what if what if your internet goes down in your area? That's, that's the game. Yeah, that's bad the luck. Game. And then say, oh yeah, but I have 3G, so I can always switch on 3G. But the time you switch on 3G, maybe it's like two minutes over. So, so we're down to the last six minutes now, almost down to five minutes. And so far, no new submissions yet. So I'm not sure if anyone's going to submit uh, a sandbagged score. It's, it's uh, interesting to see that uh, Fanta Wanti, the Vietnam overclockers, doesn't have team yet. Uh, while some of the latter, latest score that we are were from Team Finland, Clan OC that was here uh, this weekend, uh, overclockers.com, Guru, overclock.net, one of the rookie rumble, uh, rookie, uh, not compliant, but rookie, uh, welcoming the rookies. No, they're one of the, one of the stronger uh, rookie overclocker teams. The same goes with uh, Team LG, by the way. M team ML L MLG. MLG. My apologies. Again, it's been a, a long couple of days. So we're gonna uh, check for the latest submissions if uh, anything changes. I know that uh, Peter, you're monitoring the Twitter accounts. That uh, is actually uh, every time there's a new score, you can follow on Twitter. The handle is uh, OC Esports underscore something. I can't remember it directly. It's um, I'm losing my connection everywhere to Twitch. It's the it's the OC. Esports OC space Esports account at HW uh, at HW World Esports, and you can just follow the hashtag OC Showdown. So so far there's four minutes left. We're taking questions on the live chat, and I know there's some guys uh, here on the live. Uh, hi Visman, hi, good morning to all. I trust you had a good evening. Yes, we had. That was a uh, lot of fun. Very relaxed. Everyone was. Uh, Happy after the uh, amateur competitions, all the amateurs were uh, having fun, as well as the, the guys from the World Series. So that was like very relaxed yesterday evening, um, much more relaxed than on Saturday because Saturday the uh, World Series was still happening and everyone was uh, benching full out, like most of the guys were still, uh, still benching full time. And we have uh, ZTW000 that say, hi, how are you? We are doing fine, except that we are still a bit uh, tired. I think. Uh, 
tonight's sleep gonna be very uh, important. Three minutes and 32 seconds left in this uh, Asus ROG OC Showdown Formula Series Round 1 of 2015. Peter, do you think we're gonna have new scores? I don't think so. You don't think so? I don't think so. But we can't tell anything before the end because we never know. But, it's, I mean, this is a live stream, but what's the delay? So when we are saying there's no more scores coming, does that mean that they, the audience, also see no scores? Or do they know so it in far, real time? Or? So far, when we do come in, there's, uh, there's just, I think, like a 30 seconds delay between us and the, and the live. So what we can do is, when you see the time left hit 2 minutes and 40 seconds right now on the stream, and then we know how much, how much the delay is here from Poitiers to the rest of the world. It's about uh, 30 seconds. So when you see 2 minutes and 50 seconds left, you actually see 2 minutes and 20 seconds if you're right on the, on the systems, on okay, the, on the web page. So, so, so basically people will know if there is new scores just before us. Oh, I before see. they actually hear us. Because we will know all at the same time. Oh, someone just said now. But it's actually 2 minutes and 22 here. So now I'm confused. You'll have to explain to me the truth. The, your delay story okay, so doesn't the really internet works that you have latency and you have a different servers doing the encoding. So we are actually sending from France to Germany to the Twitch uh, network. And then from Germany, uh, this is replicated to all over the world in the data centers. And then from there, you can actually access the feed. I see. But then, depending on the way you do encode the video, they have to re-encode that one or not. It just depends. And then you add some more latency and more delay to it. Actually, I, less did, than two I minutes, did test... Less than two minutes. I did test Twitch and Dailymotion. Dailymotion have a, a faster network delivery. But they're bigger. So. And now it's 20 seconds. 20 seconds left in the competitions. We have left a minute and 26 seconds. Still no score from... Uh, new score being posted at all. Nothing. Uh, Peter... I have to be honest, I do think that's the, almost going to be the end, or we do maybe to, no. We do, we do have to mention that all these scores are preliminary, so the, the result moderators will have to go o over each submission to validate and verify and then approve the score before it's considered a final ranking. So we are not talking about the final one, that's the preliminary, preliminary one. Preliminary, yes. And uh, then if there's some bad score, they're going to get pulled out and then the ranking could change here. Correct. So it's important to understand that there's 43 seconds left in these competitions. NVIDIA Forever 2, Zwitterion and Wanted are in the top three. They are all five points apart from each other. So there's like a 33 seconds. Can you do it? Oh, we eh? have a new score? No, we don't. No, we don't have, <laughs> you don't have a new score. No, no, I'm kidding. 25 seconds. I think that's uh, that could be pretty final because usually the popcorn timer have like uh, 30 minutes to 5 minutes before. Uh, most of the guys don't... It's and time it to sounds, get a coffee, I yeah. think. So let's wait for the 10 last seconds of this ROG OC Shadow Formula Series. 6, 5, 4... four Three, two, one. one, and this is it, NVIDIA Forever 2 won the competitions. Preliminary, it's just preliminary, preliminary yeah. results. <laughs> uh, Clan OC, and uh, followed by a second, uh, Zwitterion 93, and in the third place, the Wanted. <laughs> then we do have uh, Team Finland with the Baron, that is fourth, and Fanta Wanty at fifth place. So actually, actually, I'm pretty happy to see three of the... Uh, Clan OC guys, the French guy in the top 10. Actually, the three guys were here this weekend. Yeah, that is pretty cool, isn't it? Like it. Then we have uh, someone from Romania, Finland, uh, Vietnam, Germany, USA, uh, Peru, and actually we have two guys from the USA. Yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. Like we do this, we we started this year with Ejabla to do the world tour events, and we picked three locations this year in uh, Montreal in. Poitiers, which is France, the one here, and then the next one is going to be in Taipei, Taiwan. And the, the, the biggest one for sure this year is here in, in Poitiers. And we see a lot of new guys coming in, a lot of new faces, people who've not, never been to an overclocking gathering before. A lot of the people, of course, the local folks from, uh, from Planet Say and Coconut Land who come here. 
and uh, it's pretty cool to see that some of them actually make it into the top 10 of these big 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 overclocking competitions I really like it and uh, these guys are actually either on Clancy or Cocotland the two main forums uh, for the French guys and uh, it's important to note that uh, Cocotland was one of the uh, partners for the event this weekend also yeah, yeah they helped us out finding some uh, some hardware they helped us out set up the entire workshop for uh, for amateurs as well very very good help very very great so so far congratulations to nvidia forever 2 Zwitterion 93 and the wanted and the congratulation to all the other uh, 35 overclockers that did participate in this rog showdown formula round one i think this is it for us um we're gonna have some coffee we're gonna try and clean up our mess here a little bit then we're going to get some sleep and then we'll travel at the end of the week to Germany Germany indeed for another actually another ROG event ROG camp ROG Germany, camp yeah. yes where we will be able to see new guys that never used LN2 before compete and get trained on LN2 at that point so stay tuned we're gonna be back uh, next Saturday morning Europe time and don't forget to subscribe to the Twitch channel. Don't forget to subscribe on Daily Motions at the same time. And we hope to see you guys in the next few days. Thank you very much. And we'll be seeing you in the next few days. Bye. Bye.